All right, well, is it time to look beyond the past to bury the negativity and just hope for some difference? We keep asking this show after show, month after month, year after year. And whenever we raise all of this optimism, whenever so many people expect some change to happen, it all comes collapsing on us. Will this be the exception to what has become a rule? Joining us now, uh, Abhishek Manu Singhvi of the Congress, GVL Narsimara of the BJP, uh, the former secretary to the government, Mr. Vivek Karju, an old Pakistan hand, also joining us on the program from Pakistan, Ashraf Kazi, the former Pakistan High Commissioner to India, and Lieutenant Colonel Shafkat Sayed, the defense analyst there. I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining us. Mr. Kazi, let me come to you first. There is um, a lack of clarity on whether or not Maulana Masood Azhar has indeed been arrested. Uh, some sources in Pakistan, including a federal minister, seem to have indicated that, look, yes, that is the case. But beyond that, there are no further details. There is no formal message, it seems, from Pakistan to India, at least none that we've heard of, which indicates that. Do you have any clarity, anything that you may have heard on this? Well, to all um, intents and purposes, uh, the information I have is that he is indeed uh, under detention, whether you call it protective custody or uh, he's not formally arrested because once you're arrested, you've got to be produced before a magistrate uh, within a certain time. And for that, you then have to charge him. And for that, you need specific evidence. So it's a, it's a first step. And I think today, as you, as you mentioned earlier, the National Security Advisors are in touch with each other. And I'm quite sure they have a complete clarity on, on what the position is with respect to him. Uh, there may have been some, uh, I noticed, you know, some inconsistencies with uh, some statements coming out, but I have no doubt personally that he is being uh, uh, detained. He's being interrogated by a team which has been constituted, and that team is expected to travel to uh, uh, <coughs> India uh, to uh, follow up on the leads that we have. And, uh, Yep. So cooperation is underway, and that is why we are having the governments and their officials and indeed the ministers talking positively about uh, the talks, yes, possibly for logistical reasons, uh, the foreign secretaries will uh, need a couple of days, also to make uh, the national security advisors were meeting beforehand, so I, uh, um, I imagine I'm looking so you, forward you, you to... You are optimistic, uh, Ambassador. You, you are optimistic of the process so far. I'm optimistic at yeah. this phase that, yes, the foreign secretaries will meet. Yeah, and, and there is nothing to suggest uh, anything negative as far as that is concerned. Both sides have agreed to, to postpone these, uh, these meetings, but nothing in, the, in terms of postponing it because they don't want them to happen. It's just a rescheduling which was, is, is going to take place. Abhishek Manu Singhvi, sir, uh, of the Congress Party, what's wrong with what is happening thus far? Is there any reason to be pessimistic? The Foreign Secretary level talks will happen. There has been a rescheduling. There's been no cancellation. The National Security Advisors are speaking with each other. Many from Pakistan have said that Masood Azhar is in custody, detention, call it what you want. Uh, is this not all a big step forward from what we've seen in the past? I have not said, and nobody has suggested that it should, one should be pessimistic. But equally, one should be very, very cautiously optimistic and in a restrained manner. Certainly, Nawaz Sharif should get the benefit of doubt. I wouldn't say the same thing about his other uh, senior persons in the army or other persons, but certainly he deserves the benefit of doubt. However, a detention, both in law and fact, may be something very, very trivial and very, very insignificant unless it is followed up by a consistent series of steps of arrest, charges, sustained prosecution. Now, the reason why there is cause for neither, of course, pessimism, because he deserves benefit of doubt, but certainly not for very, very high-level optimism, is because Pakistan has made such starts which have proved to be false starts several, several times in the past. These are early days. I think Pakistan has at least supposedly mm -hmm. shown a positive step. We don't know the details. It is so astonishing you, indeed as, as, that as, there is no official confirmation As yet. a Congress leader, but I your party to welcomes them, what has happened it should so happen far? soon. Dr. Singhvi, does the Congress no, I, welcome these developments we thus far, Pakistan's actions so far? I, I, that's, why, that's why I said 
if you talk of these immediate developments, we are very cautiously optimistic. Okay. Cautious but optimism. we must repeat what we've been saying all this while, that for, na- to, for two years, or for one and a half years, uh, this knee-jerk back forth, cancelling and then putting a button and having and then again cancelling the zigzag U-turns have not been conducive to a consistent Indo-Pak foreign policy. Okay, well, Dr. Nevertheless, Singh, we believe that we must remain engaged and therefore this is good. Okay. Therefore this is good. Well, uh, be engaged and therefore it is good. Be clear in the stand you are taking. Um, Mr. GVL Narsimha Rao, is this what, what is happening now that this government has realized that yes, there has been a setback as far as Pathan Court is concerned, but we are going to go the course as far as engaging Pakistan is concerned with the hope that in the long run, we can get that peace process truly started. So it's, it's not just about testing the waters as far as this government is concerned, it's about going the course and in having already tested the waters to a certain extent. No, Vishnu, I think uh, the government of India and Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi have shown, the, uh, shown a positive intent to, uh, to, have, to take these relations forward. I think the, uh, the, the steps taken from the Indian side have been appreciated, not just uh, in India and in Pakistan, but all over the world. But Pathan Court happened thereafter, and certainly the onus uh, is on Pakistan to prove that they have nothing to do with these attacks and they are willing to take all the required steps to really get the talks back on course. And therefore, we had the government of India had shared certain actionable intelligence and Pakistan has taken certain steps, uh, initial steps, which have been welcomed by the, by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today. But, uh, and then also there is an agreement to reschedule these talks and, and there is no rancor, there is no animosity but certainly, the follow-up steps have to be taken by Pakistan. Okay. It's not good enough to take initial steps, okay. but follow-up action is equally important. And we want to see not just the intent, but also the final outcome of this action All right. in, in a very concrete manner, which requires some time. And government of India has certainly, therefore, wanted to uh, uh, get these talks rescheduled. And Pakistan has accepted, uh, and it's time for Pakistan to really make that rapid progress in the investigations and prosecution of uh, the perpetrators of the crime. Okay. The, Let me old, just go the across big difference that you see I now your compared point. to the past, just yeah. one more sentence, compared to the past is Pakistan has made, certainly in terms, of the, in terms of the commitments they have made, they have not been in denial this time. They have made specific commitments and they have begun to take action. Okay, so let's so see how let's, does let's it hope. translate into no, no, concrete Mr. Rao, action? I want to go across to another we panelist. We've for. got plenty of time. I'll come back to you. Uh, Colonel Shafkat Syed, sir, uh, the concern over here, certainly in security circles, has been this. That on the one hand, we can presume and be certain almost that the Jaish-e Mohammed was involved in the attack in Pathan Court. But the larger question arises about who is training these terrorists who are coming across. The skill of these soldiers is at the level of regular infantry at the very least. Uh, they, they demonstrate military skills. Uh, they demonstrate skills in, 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 in good communication when they're operating. They can penetrate highly defended areas as well. Therefore, the question is this, sir. Is there not a larger concern or should India not have a larger concern that your security establishment, one way or the other, is associated with at least training these terrorists? I, I don't know how you look at the things, but if you go logically, you would realize that it does not suit Pakistan to escalate with India. And uh, army which is uh, very thickly involved in uh, FATA, uh, it would be very difficult for army to manage uh, FATA and escalation on the eastern border at the same time simultaneously. So I think the any sane person with very uh, minimum of uh, logic and, and uh, uh, thinking ability would not go for uh, something like uh, you presume that Pakistan has done in Pathan no, but sir, would you therefore, busy. would Colonel Syed, would you therefore say that the Afghan police chief uh, of, of one of their provinces was essentially insane when he made the suggestion that the attack which took place at Mazari Sharif was done by, by pa- Pakistani security personnel, given the level of training that they had, the motivation they had, the skills that they had, hmm. the weaponry that they had? Forget about India. We're also speaking about Afghans. Okay. Now, uh, what would you tell me that how is this ISIS? Is it being also trained by Pakistan Army, which is 
uh, fighting not oh, only sir, the Iraqi and Syrian government, but it is fighting Russians, Americans and everybody.